Thank you very much. It's uh, lovely to be here, um, and it's a, a great opportunity. I have uh, been working on research on the effects of uh, whether societies have very big income differences between rich and poor, or whether they have smaller income differences. And I want to tell you how damaging inequality is. Um, the difference between the work that on inequality that has uh, been done and has dominated perhaps the trade union movement in the past and what I have done is that we show the empirical effects on a society, how it affects levels of health in the population, how inequality affects um, the amount of violence, the scale of drug problems, uh, the number of teenage births, the amount of mental illness in a society. All these things are strongly affected by whether the income differences are larger or smaller. And I'm going to show you the, that data. I want to start, though, uh, by showing you the effects of uh, economic growth. In the early stages of economic growth, there are very rapid rises in life expectancy. But then over time, the increases in life expectancy cease to be related to uh, economic growth. And interest, the interesting thing is if you look at happiness, you have the same pattern. Happiness rises fast in the early stages of economic growth, and then it flattens off. And if you look at measures of well-being within our societies, the same thing is true. You can look at periods when national income per person doubles, and you find that measures of well-being show no change at all. So although economic growth has transformed the quality of our lives, we in the rich developed world are the first generation to have got to the end of that process. I'm going to be talking entirely about the rich developed countries on the top right hand part of that graph, where economic growth no longer matters in terms of the real quality of our lives. These are the countries I'm going to be talking about. Um, Norway, the USA, Switzerland, Denmark, Ireland, Netherlands, Austria, Belgium, Canada, Japan, Sweden, Australia, France, Italy, Germany, UK, Finland, Singapore, New Zealand, Spain, Israel, Greece, and Portugal. These are the countries for which we can get good income distribution figures um, amongst the 50 richest countries in the world. And you can see there that there is absolutely no relationship between national income per person and life expectancy. Some of those countries are twice as rich as others. Norway and Sweden, twice as rich as Israel, Greece, and Portugal. And it makes no difference to life expectancy. Um, yet within our societies, within every, all these rich countries, there are extraordinary social gradients in health between rich and poor. Within our societies, we see an extraordinary gradient in health going all the way up. So it's not just the poor who have worse health than the rest of us. Each step in the social hierarchy, health improves as you move up. And so even the people who are just below the top have less good health than the people at the top. Everyone here is part of that pattern. And what it shows is life expectancy, sorry, is that income is very important within our societies, but not between them. That's a paradox. And the explanation is that within our societies, we're looking at the effects of relative income, at the effects of inequality, at the effects of social position, where we are in relation to each other, and the scale of the differences between us. The measure of inequality we've used is simply how much richer are the top 20% in each country than the bottom 20%. And you see in the more equal countries on the left, Japan, Finland, Norway, Sweden, the top 20% is three and a half or four times as rich as the bottom 20%. But in the more unequal countries, the United Kingdom, Portugal, USA, the differences are twice as big. 
And you can see uh, Austria there, um, just to the, the left of the, the middle of the distribution. Uh, your, bot your top 20% is nearly five times as rich as the bottom 20%. And now I'm going to show you the effect those differences have on societies. We collected international data on all these problems. We connected, collected international data on life expectancy, on children's maths and literacy scores in each country, infant mortality rates, homicides or murder rates, imprisonment, which is the proportion of the population in prison in each country, uh, teenage birth rates, levels of trust, that's how much people feel they can trust others in society, obesity, um, mental illness, which in these figures includes drug and alcohol addiction, they come from the World Health Organization, and social mobility. And there we've put them all together in one uh, basket, our index of health and social problems. And you can see there's an extraordinarily close tendency for the more unequal countries, the inequality is always on the right-hand side, the far side, to have uh, more of all those problems, less good health, more violence, more people in prison, more mental illness. And yet, if you look at that same index of health and social problems in relation to national income per person, there's no relationship. 